Right, it's time for the breakdown. I'm joined by Anita and Dan. We're talking Chelsea and Leicester. Anita, I know you're a Chelsea fan, um, so let's start with you. It's been a very mixed bag to start the season, hasn't it? I feel yeah. Everton, gritty win. Tottenham, a point, but you should have won. And then Leeds, I mean, you probably don't want to talk about it, but it was uh, an absolute annihilation yeah. from start to finish. <clears throat> How do you feel Tuchel's doing? How do you feel about Chelsea right now? First off, yeah. it wasn't an annihilation. That's, my, that's just my opinion. That's right. just my opinion. All right, it wasn't a dilation. Yeah, was. yeah, we, uh, we absolutely got battered. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually quite a painful match for me to sit there and watch because of the rivalry as well between the two clubs. You're yeah. just thinking, let's just get one goal back and call it a night, but we didn't even manage to get the one. So, yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. But as far as it goes, right, with Thomas Tuchel, I will always stand by him. I always back him until, you know, results kind of look ridiculously bad. And I'll have to take a look at him and yeah. say, okay, what are you doing here? But... He has a plan and he, he's brought in a couple of players. He's brought in Raheem Sterling, brought in Koulibaly. And I can see that he's trying to build a team that can do the pressing, that can press highly. You saw it against Tottenham. The way we pressed against Tottenham was something I've never seen Chelsea do before. It was absolutely insane. And that's more of the things that we, I want to see and more Chelsea fans want to see. Unfortunately, it didn't happen against Leeds. For some reason, we looked lethargic. We were second on balls and... I think we were 10 kilometres behind and running distance against Leeds you as know well. What that means now, Anita. Sunday, Monday. In you go. You've got to be in. Got to, yeah. Tuchel's got to be with them now. Yeah. Um, yep. Dan, what's your perspective of Chelsea from a sort of outside thing? It's, it's been that really mixed bag, hasn't it? We sort of one result could have put, shot them up the league, but they're four points after those two games. I wouldn't be massively downheartened if I was a Chelsea fan because I just thought they were so, so impressive in that Spurs game. Deserved, undoubtedly, to, to win that game. And then the next time, sometimes you just have off days. Sometimes the teams are good. Leeds were very good yeah. on, on, on that Sunday game. I thought they were exceptional. And like you say, they had a good game plan. They worked, ran their socks off and it, and it worked. I think the problem with Chelsea at the moment is I think everyone knows they're not finished in the yeah. transfer market. So they're kind of maybe in some ways behind some of the teams that they're playing because they're not the finished yeah. article. So mm -hmm. far, they're waiting for the transfer window to finish and see how their team lines up. But I just think they're cr I'm crying out for a striker. I want to talk Leicester. I'm worried about Leicester. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whole spine appears to be going. The big one for me, Kasper Smeichel going, just because of his ability as a goalie, undoubtable, but mm. just sort of those leadership qualities in the change of room, he's been there through that such long spell. Mm. Fafana's going. Tillemans looks like he's going. Madison's been linked with Newcastle. Vardy signed the contract, but he's 36. So, Dan, it just appears... I mean, normally they're a sort of banker between that sixth to eighth position. They're always going to be in and around, looking to build. Brendan Rodgers is a manager, progressive. Can they get in the Champions League? And now, one bad transfer window, and they're looking down rather than up, aren't they? Yeah, and, you know, everything with Leicester is wrong at the moment. They've yeah. got unhappy players. The manager's visibly unhappy by what's coming out that he's saying after games and saying in his press conferences. The fans are desperately unhappy as well. Some, a lot of them not happy with Rodgers. So Leicester it just feels like a bad camp yeah. at, at the moment. Every, mm. Everything feels a bit up in the air. Even to the point of what you say about Schmalker, you know, there's a huge leadership void gone there. But I almost feel like Rodgers, he, he kind of wants to break up those players that just were successful, the ones again. that won the league. Yeah, but a lot of power in the dressing room. Obviously, Schmeichel had a bit of a relationship with the owners as well. Yeah. They've changed the captain, and I, I just thought, oh, Jamie Vardy will be the Leicester captain. But he's gone to Johnny Evans with Mark Brighton, who's quite a low-maintenance player as the vice-captain. Like, yeah. Why is Vardy not in the in the leadership group? I feel like there's something odd this going is on at Leicester. This changing the social groups. So yeah, exactly. So you've got a bit too much you know. power over it. Let's bring <laughs> it back. Yeah, Leicester's just, it's, it's not going well. Look on the pitch as well. You know, they've, they've chucked away points from winning positions in, in games. Arsenal, they get a goal to get back in the game, run down the other end and concede, keep a look shaky. Mm. So there's nothing good coming out of Leicester at the moment. And if I was a Leicester fan, I'd be concerned. Tactically down for Leicester, I know we've been quite negative on them so far, but this one feels a little bit like a free hit for them going away, going to Stamford Bridge. How do you think they'll set up? And is there, is there any positives Leicester fans can take going into this one? They've got a good record at Stamford Bridge in recent years. I think Leicester, they've had a couple of good results there. But the problem they've got at the moment is their best defender isn't going to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be sat at home because essentially it's the Wesley Fafana derby, this one. You know, he, he likes to be playing for Chelsea. Yeah. He plays for Leicester, but he'll be playing for none of them at, at the weekend. So when you then look at the back line that's cobbled together for them, you've got Daniel Amate, Johnny Evans, mm. you know, they've got centre-backs at the moment, so and Chu probably may play as well. They're playing a, playing a back three at the moment. But none of the centre backs are really fit for purpose. Mm. So there's nothing good coming out of Leicester at the moment. And if I was a Leicester fan, I'd be concerned. 
Right, let's get down to it. Anita, we'll start with you. Chelsea, do you think... what? Which version are we going to get? The first game, the second game or the third game? If Thomas Tuchel has anything to say about it, we'd get the... Was the result of the, the first game, one. potentially. The result of the first game, with the, the playing performance of the second game and avoiding anything that happened in that third game. But we won't have Koulibaly for the next match, will we? Because he's got a, a mm. match ban. So uh, I'm just trying to think what Thomas Tuchel is going to do with that back line because who then shifts into that left centre-back position? We don't know. Let's see how it goes. I'm, I'm predicting a 1-0 to Chelsea. Nothing extravagant. Okay, done. Yeah, Chelsea will win. I think Kukurea will come in and, and play that left centre back role with Chilwell moving to left wing back potentially, and I think that will see a lot more progression coming out of the back for Chelsea. I think Chelsea will win quite comfortably. But would, gonna... would I want to see Kukurea at a left centre back the same way I don't want to see Rhys James at right centre back? You know what I'm saying? I think you might see both. Oh, I think it's just because you're here. I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a Chelsea win, but based on just how bad Leicester are at the moment. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's a cool house. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.